Well, good day, friends, and welcome back to the St. Paul Handicapable Ministry YouTube service on this, the first day of November, 2023. It's just so good to see everybody again. You know, one of the things that we love to do, and we do it every week when we have our in-person services, we love to sing. All right, today we got one of the favorite songs of all of us, Give Me All in My Lamp. Let's see how well we do today. Jesse, lead us away. Because you know, right now with gasoline costs, it couldn't, doesn't cost quite as much as it did a little while further back. But I have found a new solution I can put in my car, and it just goes boom, boom. In fact, Renee's car was doing that. This is a story now. It's a true story and everything. Renee had and I had been in a place, and we were getting ready. I think we were going to lunch, weren't we? And all of a sudden, the car just a chunk, just a chunk. You know, it started shaking and everything, like it, uh, it was having some problems internally, which it was and everything. And you're just afraid at any moment, it just, may just stop right there in the middle of the road. Isn't that one of the most frightening things to be on a real busy road like East Lake? You know, it's backed up with traffic, all the people coming around, and you chug it along. <laughs> and so we were afraid it was just going to stop timing right there in the floor. So we came back here, and I called my good friend, my mechanic, Bill, told him what was going on. He said, bring it in, Horton, and I'll look it over. And we brought it in that day. The next day, he had it fixed. And so he had to have some new uh, fuel injectors put in him. And now that fuel just flows so smoothly, and it purrs just like a cat. It really does. So... With that being in mind, we're going to start putting water in our car. Give me water in my lamp. Keep it burning. Give me water in my lamp, I pray. Oh, did, did I put water in the car? That's why it went kaplook, kaplook. Might be. Oh, no. Oh. Okay, we're going to put gasoline in that car. You ready? Give me all in my lamp, keep me burning. Oh, give me all in my lamp, I pray. Give me all in my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. Bum, 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 bum. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna. Sing Hosanna to the King. Kings, oh, give me grace in my heart. Keep me loving. Oh, give me grace in my heart, I pray. Oh, give me grace in my heart. Keep me loving. Keep me loving till the break of day. Bum, 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 bum. Sing Hosanna. Sing Hosanna. Sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Woo, that's a way to sing that song, Renee. Do you hear this choir we've got out here? It is incredible, honey. Now, I know there are several of you out there. Hopefully, everybody out there is happy today. You know the song. If you're happy, let's go. I see two people out there that are happy, Renee. All right, let's try to get in a happy mood. You ready? <clears throat> if you're happy and you know it, now clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, now clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face should surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, now clap your hands. Now, if you're happy and you know it, snap your fingers. If you're happy and you know it, now snap your fingers. If you're happy and you know it, then your face should surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, snap your fingers. Now, if you're happy and you know it, slap your knees. If you're happy and you know it, now slap your knees. If you're happy and you know it, then your face should surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, now slap on your knees. 
Now if you're happy and you know it, now stomp your feet, stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, now stomp your feet, stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, then your face should surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, now stomp your feet. Now if you're happy and you know it, now touch your nose. If you're happy and you know it, now touch your nose. If you're happy and you know it, then your face should surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, now touch of your nose. Now if you're happy and you know it, pull on your right, right ear. If you're happy and you know it, pull on your left, left ear. If you're happy and you know it, then your face should surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, pull on your both, your both, your, your. Now if you're happy and you know it, now say amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, now whisper amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, then your face should surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, now shout amen. Woohoo! Way to go, team! Way to sing, sing, sing! All we have been doing Special Olympics for over 20 years, and one of the highlights I did uh, a while back, it talks about the highlights on Special Olympics. You'll see a lot of people that you know and remember. All righty, let's look at the highlight on Handicapable Special Olympics. In 1999, Bill decided we should become active participants in Special Olympics. Pinellas County, where our ministry is located, has been one of the most active state counties in Florida, which has encouraged local schools and other special needs organizations to become involved. To get the ball rolling, Bill asked Maria to head up our Special Olympics group. Maria immediately went to work and began the process of organizing handy volunteers, parents, and group home leaders to assist in the recruiting of student athletes who were interested in joining Special Olympics. Within a short period of time, Maria had established her first class of Special Olympic athletes from our group. Being the leader and organizer of this group took a special person to keep things moving and Maria was an excellent choice. All the way for the next 20 plus years through 2020 and even into 2021, Maria has continued to be the leader of the St. Paul Handicapable Special Olympics team. Maria had the support of many other handicapable volunteers who assisted in the coaching and supervision of our superb team. Included in this group of volunteers were Vicki Anderson, Jim Pida, David Salter, Becky Moon, and numerous handy parents who were there to support their children during practices and events. The two largest categories of Special Olympics we were involved with were field and track and bowling. Field and track practices were held in the early months of each year and culminated with county games and area games. In May, when Special Olympics held its state games in Orlando, Numerous handy Special Olympians were selected to participate in these games. Through the years, literally hundreds of ribbons and medals were earned by our Special Olympians from their participation. Bowling was held in the fall of the year and the same protocol was followed as far as contests and state game participants. In addition to the Handy Capable Special Olympics team, we also had the Crossroads Group Home Special Olympics team that was headed by Marlies Barnes. Marlies and her volunteers worked wonders with their group as Maria and her volunteers did with the Handicapable Special Olympics team. Marlies was awarded the Crossroads has been an integral component of our Handicapable ministry for years. Combining the two groups, Handicapable and Crossroads, we have had well more than 75 of our Handicapable members involved with this wonderful organization called Special Olympics. Bandit and Onyx, they are really uh, been doing a lot of things here lately. They've got some new things they're going to be showcasing pretty soon for you. Our dogs are amazing, and one of the things that they want to share with you today it's the blessings of friends.
It is interesting how friendships can develop and grow over the years through our love of pets. In 2008, Renee and I had the opportunity to meet Lori through her affiliation with the Florida Great Pyrenees Rescue Club. It was during this time we had just lost our wonderful 10-year-old golden retriever, Goldie Bear, who died suddenly while I was away on a weekend retreat with our St. Paul Handicapable Ministry. A few weeks later, a dear friend of mine, Patsy, recommended I check out the Great Pyrenees breed. Neither Renee nor I were familiar with the breed, but Patsy insisted we at least explore the situation. Patsy had described the breed as being large, white, with the look of a polar bear. One thing led to another, and lo and behold, we went to the Florida Great Pyrenees Rescue Club website and saw various Pyrenees up for adoption. We seized the opportunity and were introduced to Lori. She brought flour to our home to meet our beloved Boston Bear, a Siberian Husky Irish Wolfhound mix whom we had adopted from the SBCA. It was instant love between Flower and Boston, and a new friendship was born between Laurie and Renee and me. It was not much longer when Laurie introduced us to another great big Pyrenees called Big Bob, whom we adopted at first sight. A few years later, after Big Bob and Boston had graduated to the Rainbow Bridge, Laurie introduced us to Lincoln. Lincoln was our greatest challenge, but we grew to love the old boy so much. After spending nine years with us, Lincoln also graduated to the Rainbow Bridge. Within two weeks of the loss of Lincoln, we had the opportunity to adopt our seventh and eighth Great Pyrenees, Bandit and Onyx. Today things have come full circle, and we have two new Great Pyrenees puppies who love people, love other animals, and especially love visiting Aunt Lori in a supersized pet supermarket. The boys love to ride in their van to go explore the shelves at Lori's store, to meet her outstanding staff, to greet her customers, and most importantly, for Lori to share scrumptious samples of joy food. These guys just love life and live it to the fullest. God wants us to make, have, and keep friends who add value to our lives, just as Lori has to ours. May we all strive to reach out to others to bring a ray of sunshine, joy, and fulfillment to their lives. The world will be a much better place if we do. All right, you know the gold nugget comes to us from Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, when Jesus said, And surely I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Those words are so comforting to me, and I called upon them time and time again. And also, as I go out and do a lot of visiting, some of the congregational care work that I do here at St. Paul, that's a verse that I share with so many people because a lot of times in our journey of life, we always have to be aware of the fact that God and Jesus through the Holy Spirit who lives within us is always there constantly with us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Hi, dear Heavenly Father, as we close the uh, end of the year real soon, we just want to be so thankful for all the many, many ways that you've blessed us this year. Oh, Father, we're just so thankful for this wonderful ministry that we have, for all the wonderful times that we generate through this, the wonderful worship services that we have in person, and also these services we do on our YouTube channel. Oh, Father, bless us this day. Be with all of our members, oh, Father, especially those who may be going through troubling times. May they always feel your presence and your peace. For we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. All righty, you know, we've been looking at the 23rd Psalm, and we're taking each verse, a part of each verse, and looking at it in an individual characteristic way. 23rd Psalm, how it impacts our lives. 23, verse 3b reads, He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. And you know, I was thinking about this and some ways to give some example. You know, I was talking about Bandit and Honest. When we first got the boys, they only weighed about uh, 92 pounds each. And now that they've been fed and they've really gotten accustomed to their new home and all, they put on a little poundage. Recently, uh, we both uh, 
had them weighed, and we found out that they weigh individually now about 125 pounds or 250 pounds together. Well, you know, it's very difficult to try to maintain control of the boys unless you have leashes that kind of guide them along the way. So anytime that we take them out into the community or we take them out into the front yard and they love to go riding in their van, we always have to be aware that we need to keep them on their leashes and keep them under control. And that's kind of like it is in our lives that we live. At times we need to have someone who kind of has us on leashes so that they can maintain control over us. And God is the person that we know that's always there to be with us, to lead and guide us and direct us. As you're probably uh, full aware that I've been a pilot for years and years, and one of the sayings that you can see on bumpers on cars or places like that is that let God be your co-pilot. And every time that I used to take uh, flights, always one of the things that you had to do, especially if you're going cross country, you had to file a flight plan. And so I would file my flight plan, and I knew that always, whenever I took off, I'd be in communication with someone, and I'd be handed off to approach control or different areas of air traffic control. And I knew that if someone always watched wherever I was going and could give me instructions and give me guidance. That's kind of like when we let God come in and be our co-pilot as we journey through life, He's right there with us. And sometimes we may get off course. There may be some type of bad weather that's in front of us, and we need to be aware of that, and we need to pray for strength and say, God, listen, help me during this troubled time in my life. And we continue to do those things that will help us greatly in our search as we look for the peace that we're all seeking to be here part of life. You know, it's just such a wonderful time as I look back and reflect upon all my many years serving here at St. Paul and the many, many people that I've gotten to know and the many, many people that we've met. And it's just been a joyful ride. And I also just think back to those wonderful times, the flying days when I could go cross country, sometimes hundreds of miles in a single day and know that God was right there being my co-pilot. All right, what do we need to be aware of to be followers of Jesus? We need to follow Jesus, read, believe, and act on His Word, and pray for strength and guidance. And if we do those things, we know it's going to help us keep us on our right path and stay in a right relationship with God and Jesus. All right, don't forget, we have our in-person worship services continuing here at St. Paul. Come and be a part of us. Be safe out there, and remember, God loves us more than you could ever imagine. Have a great day.